Hey guys, my name is Kyle. Looking at a lot of videos online, uh, I couldn't really find a lot regarding using MainStage for backing tracks or for click tracks, so I figured I would put this video together to kind of show how um, my band uses uh, MainStage as well as how we use it on Sunday mornings. Um, so what you're seeing now is uh, my basic template, and you can see it's in perform mode right now. Um, but what I have on the left side is my patch list. Um, and for that, I, I just have all the songs we're going to be playing that morning uh, in order. Um, you can see it's kind of indented. It shows the, the folder name, too. I just grouped it with main set offering and closing. Um, and I always have a level check song as well. Um, what you can't see is uh, my Akai LPD-8 um, MIDI controller. Um, this has buttons similar to what I configured in the layout on main stage right here. So you can see we've got six buttons here in the center. And uh, I've basically programmed these buttons to uh, this top row to take, um, take you from song to song. That would be this uh, left button and this right button. And I've uh, programmed it with this uh, LPD-8. So I can go from song to song really easily by using that. Um, and then I've got the middle two on the top row taking, uh, taking you between markers. Um, and so uh, for all these songs, what I've done is created um, the, the click track and the backing tracks in Logic and then imported them into main stage. And there are some great videos on YouTube for how to do that. Um, I might put a video together for that as well to show you exactly how I do it. But uh, that's what I've done behind the scenes here. And what that carries over is the marker names. Um, so I've got all of these songs um, in the order that uh, I'll be doing them on Sunday mornings. So you can see I've got these two buttons taking us between markers. Um, so that's the top row. Um, on the bottom right, I've got a cycle. So uh, if we're doing like a chorus of a song, and uh, say we were in like the chorus of the song of Worship the King, and uh, you know I just wanted to do it again for whatever reason, um, what we could do is uh, just cycle it. So by turning on the cycle here, I've got it uh, basically just it's going to repeat the uh, marker until you turn it off. And then obviously the most important button is my play stop button in the bottom left. Um, I've actually done a couple things here. Um, I have several other buttons that are kind of hiding behind some things here. So when I press play and stop, um, it's going to not only play and stop, but also take me to the start of the song. Um, so I've got a couple behind the scenes things here, but when, when I do that, So you can see uh, you're hearing both the backing track and the click track here. Um, I've also got um, uh, kind of a robot audio doing a count in for all the songs. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to have that, but it makes it so that the drummer doesn't have to click off every single song. Um, so that makes it really, really convenient. Um, so you can kind of see how that works. Again, if I press the same button again, it's going to stop it, take us to the, take us to the, the top. Um, so that way. Whoever's controlling it, and usually uh, in the case um, of Sunday mornings, Sunday morning services, it's just the drummer controlling everything. So he just presses the button once to start from the top, he presses it again to uh, to stop it. Um, likewise, it's really easy. Let's say we're in practice and we're like, you know, we want to start in verse two. Um, all the drummer has to do is uh, press the button once, and then as soon as we get the count in, press verse two. So that's how we would start from verse 2, and that way the whole band would still hear the count, and we're using in-ear monitors, um, so it makes it really convenient like that as well. Likewise, with the marker system, if we need to jump to the chorus really quick, um, I can press it before the marker's done. Press it again to stop. Um, so you can see we have a couple songs here. Take a look at Overcome here again. Uh, this song is in 6-8, so we get, uh, the way I always set it up is the click-in is the first marker on every um, song, and it's going to be one measure for free, and then it's going to give the second measure the count-in, and then the third measure will actually begin the song, so it'll be like this. And in this song, I've just put together um, some, some pad sounds, as well as some upper register electric guitar things, and... Uh, Few, a few drum loops in the songs too. Um, as you can see, if we just jump ahead. Kill that. Um, 
So it's a pretty simple setup, and it, it, what's really nice is it's just very easy to use. So even drummers who, who aren't used to uh, working with this kind of software, um, all they have to do is be able to press, I mean, essentially two buttons. they got to go to the next song and, and press play. Um, so that's, that's how they would look for them. Uh, behind the scenes, we'll jump to edit mode here. You can see, like I talked about, we've got all of, uh, all of the patches set on the left side corresponding to the songs. Um, again, I, I've, I've constructed this layout, um, so I, I find this works really well. And I've gone through a lot of different stages, but I really found that putting these buttons here to match exactly what the LDP-8 um, MIDI controller looks like makes it really easy, really convenient, not any confusion. Um, likewise, on the right side, we got a list of the marker, markers for every song. Um, uh, added things like the current marker, next marker, time remaining. This makes it really nice for you to, pl to know pretty much exactly how long your set's going to take. Just add the time remaining and maybe like a couple extra moments for uh, transitions and things like that, and you can know exactly how long your set's going to be. Um, also got a couple knobs on the LDP-8, which are really cool, uh, convenient to... I'm just going between the songs really fast using a knob there. Got another song that I can just jump to the marker really quick. Um, so I'd recommend uh, this MIDI controller a lot if this is what you're doing. Um, let's jump to the song. And how I'm structuring it in the channel strips is I just have two uh, channel strips, um, both using the playback uh, plugin here. So uh, I've got playback selected, and all I've done is, like I said, created these uh, individual tracks in Logic and uh, dropped them in. A couple settings you want to make sure you have are to keep the sync on, I prefer to snap to bar, um, you also want to be sure that your meter and your tempo are the same for these uh, tracks as they are for the whole song. So if I click on the song, you can see it's a, I set it to 105 and 44, so just make, make sure that's the same as well. I've had uh, problems when that's not the same. Um, so we've got both of these going for every song. <clears throat> Finally, uh, I like to have a level check just at the beginning. This is an easy way for the sound guy to get a good overall feel for what um, the volume level is going to be for these tracks. Again, it's it's definitely an art form trying to mix master these things to be all the same level. Um, but uh, I, I spend a good deal of time trying to get them all at the appropriate level, and then I just make the level check equal to that. Um, and it's just kind of a goofy song. I think it's this is stock something I found. I didn't even make this but it allows for kind of just an easy way for the sound guy to, to mix how loud the tracks are going to be and also for you to hear how loud the click is going to be so everyone in the band can adjust it um, and know exactly what they can expect for every song. Um, so I just wanted to show everyone kind of what I'm doing on Sunday mornings with main stage here. So this is what I have. I'm going to do several other videos kind of showing some of the other back end things that I'm, I'm doing here as well, some best practices that, uh, that I've got over doing this for a while now. Uh, feel free to leave some comments. If you have any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer those for you. But I just wanted to show you some of the powerful things that uh, Mainstage can do.